Today is October 28th, 2024, and in episode 126, we'll talk about how you can increase your originality score based on the academic text that you created in class. Hello and welcome to ELT Cast, an educational podcast making English language teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.net. Before we get into today's topic, if you have any thoughts, insights, or would like to share any of your experiences, feel free to reach out to me at my Twitter handle at BNLEEZ. In today's episode, How to Increase One's Originality Score When Writing an Academic Text, I've included a link to the show notes that you might find useful. Before we get into our talk, also I want to encourage you to take a look at another page. I've included the link here in the show notes called Embracing One's Originality and Process in Writing and Academic Writing, a Guide for English Language Learners. And in this or on this page, I discuss basically my philosophy and my approach in encouraging all learners to embrace their own voice, to not worry about every single error or mistake that you're making, and that the way that you go about correcting your errors really is a result of our communication, the feedback that I'm providing, the questions that you have. And I would stick to that process instead of trying to use any form of AI to really generate or try to avoid questions. There might even be times of awkward um, moments of language that are that, that doesn't really interfere with the overall message. And really that's the gauge for me as I am reading your text is trying to understand your point, making sure and helping you try to articulate your point, your argument, your point of view, but again, try to maintain your own voice. So this page really goes through and describes my expectations, what I, what you can expect from me and, and my expectations from you. And I give some tips on how you can avoid uh, having to deal with low originality scores, things that you can do to try to increase or maintain a high originality score. Things like trying to avoid grammar checker, again, trying to avoid uh, any kind of translation software. The obvious also being that we wanted to avoid any kind of generative AI that generates text. And that can be at any level. It can be at the level of, of a topic sentence, if you're writing a longer piece, a particular section heading, of course, a body paragraph itself, or any, any separate sentences. We want to try to avoid using any form of AI to generate those, those kinds of texts. In my case in particular, I think the only exception where I would uh, allow AI to be used or, or even encourage you to use it would be perhaps at the very end of your writing process when you've completed your essay or your paper that you select all of that text and perhaps you use AI to generate some ideas for headings. And maybe in a separate video, and certainly those of you who have had me in class, we have talked about using AI in other contexts for brainstorming and just trying to find certain articles. And so there are times I feel, in, in, at least in my teaching practice, and those of you who have class with me, that there are times where AI may be used. But in this case, this video is very specific to, let's say you have you've done your due, due diligence and you've created a text the best that you could and you're still struggling to increase your originality scores this is the video that uh this is the the objective of this video is to give you some ideas and strategies for doing so so uh the first thing i want to share with you here is a prompt that i use to generate a paragraph using ai so i'm using ai here to demonstrate a text to provide a text and I'm not going to go through this entire prompt. You can look at the show notes here to see the criteria that I used for creating this prompt or for creating this paragraph. But the entire paragraph is generated by AI. And you'll notice here that I've highlighted a few parts of the, the paragraph where I would suggest that you, that you avoid, or there's even one case, for example, in this citation, this is an error according to APA any authors that are listed that you have three or more you want to use at all instead of list out the the authors but other things like being careful with demonstratives to use them sparingly uh, use the future tense sparingly 
And for the most part, I would avoid any kind of par uh, comma followed by the, a participial phrase. This is very common when using AI uh, and it kind of overuses, in my humble opinion, the comma followed by the participial phrase. And we can talk about in class about how to reword that, some alternatives to how you can uh, create, basically say the same thing without having to overuse the comma followed by a participial phrase. But here we have a paragraph that was generated by AI with the references, and below I have my version. And this is what I want to discuss with you today, is give you some ideas, some ways that you can go about taking your current text and increase your originality score by essentially rewording it. Now, in this case, I'm using the same sources. I'm, I'm using the same citations as the original. I'm using the same references as the original, but I'm modifying it. So let's take it sentence by sentence. In the first original topic sentence, it reads, the integration of artificial intelligence, AI, in formal education significantly enhances personalized learning experiences. Now in my version, I say science teachers who use generative AI personalize the learning of each learner based on personal needs and wants. Now, in this example, you'll notice that I have reworded a few things here. So, in the original, it states formal education, and I replaced that with science teachers. So, I'm using what's called hyponyms, which is basically word families, where I'm taking a general term like formal education, and I'm using a specific term that still fall, falls under the umbrella of formal education, but it's more specific. In this case, I'm saying science teachers instead of formal education. I use a clause here who use generative AI. Gener generative AI is coming from the term artificial intelligence, AI, which is a more broad, it's a broader term than generative AI. So again, I'm using an, another hyponym. I'm using a more specific term that falls under a, a general category called artificial intelligence. Still the same idea, but it's more specific. Now I'm using the term, the verb personalize, because again, I want to find a good dynamic verb from the original. And this word does come from the original text, personalized, personalized learning experiences, but I changed the, the adjective form personalized and I'm using the verb form again, trying to find good possible words in the original that would act as good verbs in, in my reworded version. Uh, I go on to say the learning of each learner. A little bit awkward there. Probably I would go back and change that again. I know that this example that I'm sharing is, there are, not to say this is the perfect example, and there I could easily continue going through here and make changes to try to improve it. It's a little awkward, uh, I admit, saying learning of the learner. Maybe I want to say student. Um, based on personal needs and wants. Now, the, sec the, third, the second aspect of this reworded topic sentence, notice at the end I add personal needs and wants. Now, this was not in the original per se. This is not um, stated specifically in the original. So another approach that you can take, in addition to taking general terms from, let's say, whatever you have currently, is to add a little bit of information. Of course, we still need to be able to uh, relate it to the key point that we're trying to make. And I feel that th in this particular example, personal needs and wants still falls in line with the, the original intention of this body paragraph. But this is another approach. So uh, in this first sentence, the topic sentence, I've done two things. One thing I've done is try to use more specific terms than the original. And the second... I have added a little bit of information as well. And you could probably add a third strategy here, a third tip in just restructuring, rewording uh, the information, let's say starting with a different subject, using a different verb, maybe using a different direct object and so on. So to expand this point, you could also think of structure in terms of simple sentences, compound sentences, and complex sentences. 
in terms of a topic sentence, typically simple sentence and or or a complex sentence is going to be your best option for the most part. But again, just think of adding phrases, whether they're prepositional phrases, maybe they're infinitive phrases, maybe gerund phrases, or other options of changing the structure of a sentence, adding clauses, like I mentioned, with complex sentences, adding relative clauses or subordinating clauses. So think of the, the language options that you have available to you when you're trying to not only reword it and find maybe more specific terms, not only adding terms, but also structuring the sentence in different ways. Okay, the second sentence is going to be the first evidence sentence, and the original reads, AI-powered tools in science education have been shown to improve learning outcomes by providing tailored feedback and adaptive learning paths. Now, in my version, I begin with the transition. Regardless of the level, science teachers motivate learners by adapting personalized and predictive feedback to each student. Now, this regardless of the level, I actually went back to the article, and this is another tip I would suggest that you do, is go back to the original text, the reference, and begin looking for to maybe alternative ideas on how you can add additional information. So regardless of the level came from me going back into the results section and noticing that this meta study co covered or included science teachers at different levels. And this wasn't originally included in the uh, generated AI version of the text here. It doesn't mention different levels. So I added that as a transition. Regardless of the level, science teachers motivate learners by adapting personalized and predictive feedback. Another new piece of information that I got from the text was predictive feedback, which was not included in the text, the original text. Um, the personalized feedback was included, so I, in that case, used, I used, um, I'm taking that pretty much directly from, actually it does it, I'm going back and looking again at the original, I'm sorry. The personalized learning feedback and predictive feedback can, is additional information that I got from the results from the original article. It wasn't included in the evidence sentence, but it was mentioned in the topic sentence. So there is kind of a, a direct repetition going on. And if you notice that I included from the topic sentence of the original to the evidence sentence of my version, um, but predictive feedback is new information. Again, I got that information from the article and I'm adding a little bit more specific or a little bit more context to this particular evidence sentence. So this is, again, my attempt to reword the, evidence, the first piece of evidence that I've included. In the second piece of evidence, or the second evidence sentence, the original reads, similarly, AI applications in education facilitate personalized learning by dynamically adjusting instructional content based on individual student performance. My version reads, moreover, so I'm just using a very similar transition, a sentence connector, but I'm using a different term, moreover, instead of similarly. And then I use the word performance-based instruction allows for an ongoing adaptation of course content throughout the learning sequence. So performance-based instruction, I got that from the original, not word for word, but it said something like instruction was the basis for um or the performance was based on on the instruction and so i reworded it but again i got that level of detail from going back to the article and, and just trying to capture a few extra terms here or more specific terms that were not included in the original version of the text so this is another thing that you can do as well just keep going back to that article and seeing if there's some additional terms that you can include I say ongoing adaptation, of course, content. These are just my words, words that I feel comfortable using, trying to explain, again, the same idea that's coming from an outside source. And also I use terms like learning sequence. Okay, this is a term that I feel comfortable using, and it's basically saying the same thing as the original. So if I look at the original second evidence sentence again if i if i look at this where it says um 
dynamically adjusting instructional content based on individual student performance. This dynamically adjusting instructional content. These are words that I probably would not use uh, when I describe this, right? So you're looking for maybe language in the text that you could s explain either more simply, if someone were just to ask you, could you explain what you're trying to you know, say? You're trying to find ways of expressing someone else's ideas, but in your own language. And again, this goes back to my um, original comment at the beginning of this video where I'm explaining and really encouraging you to explore your own voice, to find the words that you are uh, becoming familiar with as you're broadening your vocabulary. But don't feel like you need to use technical terms a lot of times when maybe putting it in more uh, direct ways, more concrete ways, words that you would feel comfortable explaining or using anyway, is actually going to help the reader better understand the point. And that is the point, is that you're able to express yourself in a very clear way that, that your audience, your target audience, is going to be able to understand. Okay, so the next sentence is going to be our first analysis sentence. If we're going by the meal plan, uh, the the original reads, these findings suggest that AI's ability to customize educational experiences can address diverse learning needs, thereby improving overall student engagement and achievement. In my version, it reads, thus, science instructors who use AI find ways to tailor instruction and assessment that accommodate the cultural underpinnings of each student by basing their educational decisions based on the needs and wants of each learner. At the very end of this sentence, you see I'm restating again this idea of needs and wants, so I'm tying it back into the topic sentence. And again, doing a lot of the same things here. I'm using terms like science instructors. Um, I do use the word tailor instruction, so tailor does come from the original, but it came, uh, I think, earlier on in, in the original, if I'm not mistaken. And so, again, just try to tie in the analysis sentences, right? The idea of the analysis sentence is to try to link the evidence sentence back to the topic sentence. So you're trying to find what's called a warrant. If you want to look up Toulmin's method of creating an argument, where warrants are those theoretical ideas that connect the evidence back to the topic sentence. And so a lot of times we get into trouble with our analysis sentences if, we're, if our evidence sentences are too general. Remember that the evidence sentences should be more specific and provide more detail when compared to the analysis sentence. And then uh, the last sentence, uh, I try to avoid the future tense. And throughout my text, I'm trying to avoid the comma followed by the participial phrase that I mentioned earlier. And so the original reads, as AI continues to evolve, its role in enhancing personalized learning will likely expand, necessitating further exploration of its impact on educational equity and accessibility. In my version, AI to shape instruction based on the backgrounds of the learner also applies to English language teachers. So in my version here, what I'm really trying to articulate or what I'm trying to achieve is to provide a link from the com from the topic sentence, the main idea of this current paragraph, to the next paragraph that likely would follow. And you'll notice here that the basic difference is going to be that this paragraph talks about science teachers and that the next paragraph is going to focus now on English language teachers specifically and probably only address AI and instruction. Where I'm, where I'm not maybe talking about assessment, but I'm talking specifically about instruction. Perhaps even a th the third paragraph might be talking about English language teachers and assessment. So maybe I decide to, to dedicate one paragraph talking about instruction and a follow-up paragraph talking about assessment. But this first paragraph kind of lays the groundwork saying, well, in other contexts, in other educational contexts, this is, this is true. And 
then maybe I find evidence now that's more specific to English language teachers trying to build my argument, making a case for for using AI, let's say, for uh, in some to some degree in one's teaching practice. So the key takeaways here, my key suggestions here to try to increase your originality score based on your current text is to the first being use synonyms. Try to, I'm sorry, use uh, words that are more specific than maybe some of the terms that you have. Always find opportunities to be more specific. Of course, we can always be, there are cases where we can be too specific, but in most cases when I'm providing feedback to students, in most, in most situations I'm suggesting that you be more specific. So you want to find hyponyms, find word categories, and find more specific terms. We don't want to get off topic, so it does need to relate back to the central idea. But try to find more specific terms. To find more specific terms, always go back to the original reference to find inspiration, to find different terms that you could bring into your current texts. Another option here is to look structurally at your sentences and find ways to change it from a simple sentence to a complex sentence, a complex sentence to something else, maybe a compound sentence. Remember that you have a simple sentence, complex sentence, a compound sentence, and a compound complex sentence. Those four types are at your disposal. So depending on which sentence you're looking at in your paragraph, uh, recognize that you have options when you are writing. And it's always best to try to mix those different types of sentences, that you're not always writing simple sentences, that you're not always writing complex sentences, that you're not always writing compound complex sentences, for example, that you're mixing it up. You can also add a lot of phrases. Maybe you add participial phrases, gerund phrases, infinitive phrases, and prepositional phrases anywhere in the sentence, whether it's a transition, whether it's in the body of the the sentence, maybe to conclude the sentence, a lot of different options of adding uh, phrases to your text. Of course, clauses, remembering that we can use relative clauses, we can use subordinating clauses, we can use noun clauses to, again, structurally change and modify, essentially saying the same thing, but saying it in a different way. So it's, it might be worth reviewing the different types of clauses and the different types of phrases so that you have kind of the ammo, so to speak. You have the tools that you need to be able to essentially paraphrase, say, paraphrase yourself, right? Finding ways that you can articulate yourself more specifically in greater detail and for the most part and structurally in a different way. So I hope this helps. This is something I want to work with you very closely about, and I am curious to see what you're doing. I, I'm always interested in what you're doing either to generate low originality scores so that we can kind of learn things, some practices to try to avoid, and also things that you're actually doing to improve your originality score. So anytime you are going through this process, I encourage you to share your experiences with me. Um, and like I said, I'm always willing to work closely with you to help you increase your originality score and realize that in our uh, teaching classroom context, I'm always giving students opportunities. I'll always give you opportunity to receive your originality score and give you time to make corrections to an attempt to increase that originality score. So we'll stop there. Again, uh, let me know how things are going and when you are uh, trying to modify your text. And if you do have any questions, of course, see me in class or reach out to me outside of class and um, I'll be happy to assist. This has been ELT Cast, an educational podcast, making English language teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening.